Assalamu alaikum. Hello everyone. Welcome back to another ATP video. We will talk about hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Without further ado, let's begin. Let's start off with some numbers. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy isn't an uncommon disease. It has a prevalence rate of 1 to 500. Although overall it carries a good prognosis, around 1% per year hypertrophic cardiomyopathy patients would have sudden cardiac death, SCD. Family members of patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy should be screened for that disease. And for patients, we usually try to advise them to have a healthy lifestyle. Currently, we only have medications that can treat the symptoms but do not have any prognostic value. In other words, they do not prolong life expectancy. Now let's go in more details and discuss the pathophysiology of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, you have asymmetrical thickening of the interventricular septum. This results in obstruction in the left ventricular outflow tract, and due to this obstruction, we will have turbulent flow in this region. This turbulence would suck the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve and result in abnormal closure of its leaflets, resulting in mitral regurgitation and worsening of the left ventricular outflow tract obstruction. Both of these problems are abnormalities that can happen in systole. In addition, since part of the wall is thickened, we would be expecting to have diastolic dysfunction component too. So, we have problems with forward and backward blood movement, such that we are decreasing forward blood movement through the aorta because of the obstruction and the mitral regurgitation, which will give us decreased cardiac output. Low cardiac output means low blood supply to the rest of the body, so this can result in organ ischemia, including heart ischemia. What about backward blood flow through the mitral valve? Can you predict the consequences of mitral regurgitation? Let's follow the blood and see. Since we are increasing backward blood flow through the mitral regurgitation, this can result in left atrial enlargement, pulmonary edema, and pulmonary hypertension, right ventricular hypertrophy, and failure in addition to left ventricular failure. Now for the clinical manifestations, patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy can show symptoms because of one of these three main categories, obstruction, ischemia, or heart failure. Complications of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy are related to sudden cardiac death, heart failure, and arrhythmia. Of note, arrhythmias usually originate from the ventricles. However, they also can start from atria. Most importantly, patients can have atrial fibrillation. Hypertrophic cardiomyopathy patients with atrial fibrillation should be anticoagulated regardless of the CHADS VAT score. So for management, we can classify patients based on the presence and absence of symptoms. Keep in your mind that all patients should undergo sudden cardiac risk prediction regardless of symptoms. If they are found to have high risk, they should have an implantable cardioverter defibrillator, otherwise known as ICD. Now for symptomatic patients, we have certain treatments that can result in symptoms relief, which include beta blockers such as propranolol, non-dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers such as verapamil, and lastly, disopramide as a negative inotropic agent which was introduced in 1982. Now, if medical therapy fails, we have what we call a septal reduction therapy. And this septal reduction therapy can be done as either surgically or through percutaneous approach with alcohol septal ablation. Some patients can have ugly phenotypes of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which are resistant or refractory to all kind of therapy. This category of patients might benefit from heart transplantation. And lastly, we will end up with special considerations. So for preclinical disease or patients who do not exhibit any symptoms, so far we don't have any treatment to prevent hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Patients who are planning to become pregnant should follow up with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy clinics and high-risk obstetric units to plan their pregnancy. Patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and sleep breathing disorders are more prone to have worse heart function and heart arrhythmias and therefore should be evaluated and treated appropriately for their sleep breathing disorder. And by that we conclude our talk about hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. We hope you found it helpful.
Let us know what you think about our newer series in cardiology and about our today's topic about hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to get our new latest explanations. And as always, thanks for watching.